Hey guys, Caitlin here, and for this week's YouTube video, I thought we would go over how to read an x-ray. So, just like x-rays um, and EKGs, you have to go through a systematic approach to how to read them. And there's many different ways to read a chest x-ray, and they all encompass some sort of tackling and an approach. So you look at this first, and then you look at this, and then you go on to look at this. And that's just like an EKG. Usually you start with the rate and rhythm, and then you look for any signs of ischemia. So um, with a chest x-ray, I like to use the ABC approach. And when you use a certain kind of approach, and don't just look at the chest x-ray and take, try and take it in all at once, you usually find that uh, you do not miss related concerns to the possible complaint the patient came in with. And the ABC approach is what I will review in this YouTube video just because I think it's one of the most common and it's the one I know uh, the best. So let's get started. So when it comes to the ABC approach, um, it just starts with the letter A, which stands for airway. So it's telling you to look at the airway first is the trachea uh, midline. Then you want to look at bones, B for bones. Um, I like to add in soft tissue into this, so bones and soft tissue. So are there any clavicular fractures, rib fractures? Look at the soft tissue in and around the chest wall area. C stands for cardiac. What is the heart doing? Is there widened meostenum? Is there um, cardiomegaly? Uh, what's going on with the heart? D is for diaphragm. Uh, is one elevated or not? Is there free air under the diaphragm? E stands for effusion. So are there any pleural effusions? F, I like to to stand for fissures in fields. So are there any consolidations? Is there um, any congestion? Do you see any pneumothoraxes in the fields there that are kind of, the fields are shortened a little bit. Are there any pneumothoraxes? And I usually stop right there. There's a couple more, but that's what we will review today. Uh, so let's do some practice. Okay, now let's start with this chest X-ray. And when we first start reading it, we start with the letter A, which stands for airway. I don't see any foreign body, but I do definitely see a shift in the tracheal, um, tracheal deviation, actually. The trachea is supposed to run along the spinous processes of the back if the angles of the chest x-ray were shot correctly. This trachea is shifted towards the patient's right. And if you look in the left lung field, you can see an obvious pneumothorax that is likely pushing these structures, causing an, what's called a tension pneumothorax. This patient ended up having an acute tension pneumothorax following a cardiac herniation after a pneumonectomy. The bones looked fine, uh, no fractures. The heart is shifted to the right, but otherwise within normal limits. The diaphragm on the left is pushed down and likely showing the deep sulcus sign, which is also indicative of a pneumothorax. There's no effusions from what I can see in this field. And the fields and fissures don't show any consolidations nor congestion. Okay, let's take a look at this chest x-ray. Um, let's start with A. So does the airway look well? Uh, this picture is a little cropped just because I want you to focus on the main problem here. So the airway did look well. Uh, the trachea was midline straight. There were no foreign bodies. Now let's look at the bones. So there was no sign of clavicular fractures, but the next thing you need to look at is the ribs. And I like to follow the ribs starting at uh, the sternum there, and I like to follow them down until they wrap around to the back side. And when I do that with this chest x-ray, I show, um, it shows some ribs on the right side that are a little malformed, and there actually appears to be a fracture in three of them. This is a chest radiograph from an 80-year-old female who complained of chest pain following a trauma. There are non-displaced posterior fractures of the right-sided ribs, six, seven, and eight are noted. Here's a closer look at what I was talking about before, and one of the main complications of rear fractures is pneumothorax, and that doesn't appear to be shown here. In this next chest x-ray, I wanted to go ahead and point out what the obvious thing that should just jump out at you when you look at this chest x-ray. Yes, you can take this in a systematic way. Airway is fine, trachea is midline, there's no foreign bodies. Um, there are no rib fractures. Uh, we're not really looking for that in this patient because this patient came in with a ripping tearing 
uh, sharp and sudden onset of chest pain that radiates to the back with a long-standing history of hypotension and um, they have already coronary artery disease. So approximately 90% of patients with acute aortic dissection will have some sort of chest x-ray abnormality. The classic bindings of a widened mediastinum or aortic knob occur on up to 76% of patients. So just remember that a normal chest x-ray does not rule out acute aortic dissection. So looking at this chest x-ray, airway looks good, trachea is midline, no foreign bodies. Um, you can go through all the bones and clavicles and make sure they look well, and they do in this picture. Uh, the cardiac or the C looks okay, maybe a little bit enlarged. And then D, we are at the diaphragm. So what do you guys think of the diaphragms here? Yeah, so I added this chest x-ray because remember that chest x-rays can show many more things than just lung and heart pathology. It can show a lot of musculoskeletal pathology, so that's kind of included in the bones, but it could also show a lot of intra-abdominal pathology, and these both can present themselves on the chest x-ray. Seen here is a pneumoperitoneum from a perforated appendix. So you can see that free air under the right hemidiaphragm there, and that is something that you definitely do not want to miss on a chest x-ray. And no effusions, and the fissures and fields look good, clear, no pneumonia, no congestion. Now on this chest x-ray, I just want to go ahead and circle what was obvious here. So A, B, C, D, E are fine. Now what do you notice about the fields and fissures of this patient? Exactly, you have a very prominent pneumonia in the middle lobe of the right lung, sitting on top of the fissure line in this chest x-ray. Maybe there's a little bit of a left lower lobe pneumonia as well. And that's it guys, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did like it, make sure you just press the like button at the bottom. And if you like all of our videos, make sure you subscribe to the Medcakes YouTube video page. And I will see you next week.